we assemble the apparatus by putting a bung that has a hole in it into the neck of a 150ml Erlenmeyer flask. The bung needs to sit tight and snug in the neck of the flask so it doesn't fall out later and there is no air flow possible. Next the flask gets clamped into a 600ml beaker that is filled with water. So we want to make sure that the water covers almost all of the Erlenmeyer flask to ensure that we get the temperature of the water inside the flask as well. We light a Bunsen burner, put the flame on hot and then raise it onto a wooden block to create more heat directly under the beaker. Then we wait for it to start boiling. Once it's boiling, we start the timer. It needs to be boiling for five minutes so that the temperature inside the flask can adjust to the temperature of the boiling water. We take the temperature of the boiling water and then make the assumption that it is the same as the air inside the flask. While boiling water is usually around 100 degrees Celsius, um, we have to make sure that we take the exact temperatures, which is usually um, a little bit above or below 100 degrees. And we write this temperature down on our sheet. Then we attach the clamp to the hose and twist the clamp shut so that there is no more exchange of air with the environment from inside the flask. Then we have to disassemble our apparatus. Ideally we turn off the gas first. And it's best to take the whole um, setup, the clamp, including the flask, out of the boiling water and remove the setup and take it to the sink where we have a container with cold water, where we submerge the flask completely into the cold water. We start our timer again, it's another five minutes for the flask to be in the cold water so that the temperature again can adjust to the temperature of the water bath. So we can take a reading of the temperature for the water bath and write this down on our sheet as well. Once five minutes have passed, we carefully remove the hose clamp from the hose, taking care that the end of the hose is still under water at this point. Soon as we open the hose clamp, water will be sucked into the flask. This can be a little bit tricky as sometimes the bung comes loose and pops out the flask when that would mean the experiment is over. If we do it right, there will be um, a certain amount of water sucked into our Erlenmeyer flask. To determine the volume of this water, um, we pour the contents of the flask into a measuring cylinder 
and read the volume. Write this down on our sheet. To determine the overall volume of the flask, we fill it to the top with water, attach the bung again, and take it out. And now we have the exact volume of the air inside the flask at the start of the experiment measured out in water. As it's more than 50 milliliters, we have to fill our measuring cylinders a few times with the water from the flask. Once we have the final volume, we make note of that on our sheet as well.